So tonight we're going to talk about, first of all, I guess I should introduce myself. I forgot that part. I'm too lackadaisical when there's a small group in here. So I'm Susan Huff with The Soup Shop, and today's focus is going to be on salad dressings. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting to note, I was thinking about it, um, my stepfather was a real chef. I'm a cook. But chefs know that there's two things that you really have to be good at in order to be a good chef or produce a really good food. And that's to make a good sauce or to make a good dressing. And those are the key elements. Having a good quality product and being able to make a good sauce are actually the fundamental steps in being a good chef. And sauces, salad dressings, are basically sauces. They're the cold sauces, and then you have warm sauces. So those are the things that we use to add flavor, we use to marinate, we use to add um, savory, sweet, and actually to stimulate the taste buds. Because I mean, salad greens are great, but I don't know if I'd want to eat just salad greens all the time. Um, so sauces, just with meats, with vegetables, and the same with salad dressings. They can be used for marinades, they can be used for grains, they can be used for all kinds of things. But I think I want to start off by telling you there's like five aisles in the grocery store that you should never go down because they have nothing there for you. And the first one being number one is the frozen food meal section. It's wall-to-wall -wall frozen foods of all kinds of meals that you should avoid, even if they say organic, fresh, natural, all those key buzzwords, just walk on past. Because they're processed, they have to be highly processed, and there's nothing in there of value to your body. So just walk on past that aisle. The next aisle would, of course, be the soda aisle. So just walk on past the soda aisle and just keep going. <laughs> I, know. I know, the soda one. The third aisle that I think people think you just sort of get used to going down that aisle, but it's the bread aisle. There's nothing in the bread aisle of any value to you at all. There's not one loaf of bread that I would buy in a grocery store. Not any. Not uh, Killer, jo Killer Dave's or any of that. If you look at the products, especially Killer Dave's. Killer Dave thinks it's the healthiest one. There's like 40 ingredients in there because it takes so much processing to make thousands of loaves for thousands of grocery stores. So I don't buy any bread. Um, the next one would be the salad dressing and the canned soup aisle. There's no salad dressing in the grocery store that I would say is good for you to buy. Not one. I can't find one single one. I can't find anything on the bread aisle. I can't find anything in the soda aisle. I can't find anything in the salad dressing aisle. Not even one kind that I would say, yes, that's a good healthy purchase or it's a positive purchase. Um, the next thing is obviously the meat section because after 20 years of researching the meat departments and specifically having face-to-face -face meetings with the owners, not owners, the managers of meat purchases for Publix and Kroger's, sit down meetings with them, like where do your meats come from and why do you call them this? They were very clear to me that it's basically a game. And so when they call it simply fresh or organic or whatever, it doesn't really mean anything. They're basically all the same. So I would definitely avoid the meat section, definitely avoid the bread section, definitely avoid the salad dressing section, soda section, and definitely the frozen food section. So you can kind of go around the outskirts and find some of the things you need and want, but salad dressings are one of the ones that I would say there's not one single product I would say, yes, that's a good purchase. Reason being is, let's say that you want to get something cheap and easy right? What's your first ingredient almost always? Soybean oil. Soybean oil is one of the worst oils you can put in your body. So it's, um, it's, it's an, call it a non-free radical oil, but soybean oil is the cheapest, most, hydro, most um, adulterated product there is on the market. And that's why all of them have it. So this one, which you pay three times as much for, this is like two bucks, this is like 450, First ingredient, soybean oil. So that's your first ingredient. What do you think the second ingredient is? 
So no matter how pretty the package looks or how cheap the package looks, what's the second ingredient? Sugar. So it's soybean oil and sugar on every single one. I don't care if you're paying six or eight dollars a bottle or if you're paying two dollars a bottle because that's basically easy to preserve and very, very inexpensive and very stable. So it's shelf stable. It'll last a long time. Um, Hippocrates said, and Hippocrates was sort of the uh, author of what real food is, eat what rots before it does, and then you will always be eating healthy. This will never rot, ever. Um, one of the things that's kind of a negative, but a positive, is the salad dressings we have at the shop. You have to keep in the refrigerator because we don't have preservatives in them. There are a few natural preservatives that will help this last a lot longer, such as lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, mustards. Those are all natural preservatives, and they will make things last longer. I couldn't leave this on the counter all the time, and I couldn't sell it on a shelf in the supermarket. It does have to stay refrigerated. A couple of things that aren't natural preservatives that people think are are garlic. It's garlic will go bad. It rots. So it's not a preservative. Salt is a natural preservative. So in the olden days, this is what they used to preserve things. Salt. Salt, lemon juice, vinegars, most mustard because they're made with vinegars as well, are preservatives. What you find in these are xanthium gums, stabilizers, cornstarch, about 20 different odds and ends. I could read them all off of here to you. There's actually 27 ingredients in this. And the reason it is, is because they want it to be shelf stable, last a long time, and almost any, none of these things do you want to consume. Especially the fact that the second one is sugar. And if I get my glasses, I can read it. This product, which is about two bucks, actually has better ingredients in it than this product. So you can see it's not about how it looks or how much it costs. This one is a little healthier and has less ingredients in it and less sugar, weirdly enough. But it also is not emulsified. So if I can digress a little bit, emulsification, which means is where it gets blended together and it stays solid like this. When it's not emulsified, it actually separates. So it's kind of hard to get it, you have to really shake it a lot to get it to mix and blend so that you're not just pouring the oil on your salad, you're pouring the whole thing. So that's, it doesn't have quite as many emulsifiers. It does have 18% um, sugar. So 18% of this is sugar. Even in the healthy, excuse me, the cool expensive ones, every single additive in here, they consider it, they call it spices and topical, uh, excuse me, sorbates and sodium benzate, and I could just go on and on and on. You can read them yourself, but you'll see that they're all stabilizers. There's no fresh herb in here. There's, I don't know how they can use the word spices. If I use the word spices on my label with VDAC, they would say, nope, sorry, doesn't pass. I can't use the word just spices. I have to tell you what kind of spices I'm using. And um, so it's interesting that they can use those terms, but I can't. I'm glad I can't. So just know that it's not always the cost and it's not always a pretty packaging. And there's, if you'll just read the first two ingredients, what would that tell you? That's the bulk of the product. So the bulk of the product is a really inexpensive, not so good for you thing. So that's why we want to learn how to make our own dressings. So truthfully, if you have a stainless steel bowl or glass bowl or any kind of bowl and a whisk, you can do what? olive oil and vinegar. That's a, just a perfect, easy dressing. You can whip it. And to whip it is basically to emulsify it. So when you whip it, you're starting to get them to mix together and the air is going in together. It's, you can do that in two seconds at home. Some of the easy things you can do, I don't know about you guys, but um, oregano is taking over at my house. Oregano, chives right now, thyme and mint are like, <laughs> I have to like hoard them in. So if I don't chop them down fast, uh, so you could actually just take your oregano, strip it back from the leaves. I just take a bowl. I've had so many garlic scapes this week. If you plant garlic, you get the scape first. So that's the top, that's what you need to cut off so that your garlic will actually die back so that you can harvest your garlic. 
but the scapes are the first thing and this is the sweet part of the garlic. I love this part. So these I add a lot to my dressings and we're gonna, and you don't have to do a lot. You can just clip them and use, I use scissors and break them up. I'm gonna put it in the blender. So, but the herbs, I have this little thing and I love it because it's easy. You don't need power. You can be in a camper, you can do anywhere. You can put your thyme, you can put your oregano, you can put a little sea salt, you can put anything in here. And then you just pull the corn and it chops it all up for you. So it requires zero electricity and chops it all up and makes it all nice. Add that to your olive oil and your vinegar and you're good. It's really, really, really simple. And you don't have to do this with soybean oil. And I am really picky about my olive oils. This is one company that I like a lot and you can get it shipped to you from Costco or Amazon. You can buy it at, at uh, Food Lion, but it's a really good quality olive oil. It's the only big company that I know where I'm, I'm trying to tell you where you can always find it. And it always be sold in a glass, dark glass bottle, which it should be. You shouldn't be able to see your olive oil. It shouldn't be in plastic. And it's one of the better priced, widely available, good quality olive oils. I mean, I can show you some great olive oils, but you can never find them and they're harder to get and you gotta have a connection. And so they're a little bit, or you gotta pay a fortune for them. You know, there's one in California that I love and it's super buttery, but a bottle like this is about 40 bucks and I have to pay for shipping too. Yeah. So what's the name of that one? And why does it need to be in a dark glass? Because um, olive oil gets oxidized by light. So any light that penetrates the glass bottle, it actually starts oxidizing it and you don't want your olive oil oxidized. So it's, to oxidize it means it's actually spoiling it sooner. And it the olive oil can even become rancid. Any oil can become rancid. Other oils become rancid faster, but the dark glass keeps the light from penetrating the box. Lemon juice, I have all the time. Luckily in Florida, I grow, I have my own and I juice my own and I freeze a ton of it. Here I have to purchase it. But lemon juice is a great preservative. So what I do, because I make a ton of salad dressings, is I take my garlic, I do it all at one time, pop them, put it with lemon juice and vinegar, half and half. And I take these jars and I, I have about 30 of them frozen. You might need one, but this is half lemon juice, half vinegar and garlic. And I just put it in the freezer because these are mason jars. And you do know when you have a mason jar and you want to freeze something, you only fill it what I have on that? Herbs. There's herbs on that, sorry. You only fill it to the fill line. If you fill it to the top, what happens? It breaks. Yes. So you only fill to the fill line, which is the bottom line on this. So you never fill anything past that if you're going to put it in the freezer. If you put it in the refrigerator, you can fill it as much as you want. But the fill line is this bottom line here. And if you want to freeze it, you can fill in there, put your lid on it, put it in the freezer, and you're good to go. So today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this which I had in the freezer earlier. Okay. So the other thing I have in here, it's just at the fill line, is I put, cut up a whole lemon, de-seed it. You want the seeds out because seeds make things taste bitter. So seeds come out, but I use the peel, the rind, cut it up, put it in this same thing. So it's gonna have a little bit of garlic, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of vinegar, but you can do just lemon you can do just vinegar. You can do just garlic and vinegar. You can any way you want. I like a blend of all three, lemon, garlic, excuse me, lemon, garlic, vinegar. So I like it blend three, but I use the whole lemon except for seeds. Yeah. Any particular vinegar that you... You know, good white vinegar is good. I love to use Bragg's apple cider. Um, this one is going to be more pungent. Plain white vinegar will give you a a more even taste that when you use the apple cider vinegar it's better with like the lemon misos or the ginger dressings it's not as good with um, green goddess so if you have a yogurt or any kind of um, dairy product it's a little bit too pungent so the white vinegar is pretty you know benign and there's nothing bad in there for you this one though you can tell how much i use of this i use a ton so i put that in there and then today I'm just going to show you to make balsamic dressing. So this is the balsamic and you can tell it's emulsified. And the way you emulsify 
is to, so I'm going to put, I always start out with my, like a bread. It's a starter. Any way you want. Lemon juice, vinegar, garlic. You can omit the garlic. Do no garlic if you don't want. If you don't like garlic, don't add garlic. I'm going to add my balsamic vinegar. I love good balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is naturally kind of sweet. I use my next ingredient. Where do I have it? I had it here. Oh, there it is. I had it somewhere. Mustard. So my ingredient to make this a little bit thicker and a little bit tastier is a stone ground mustard. So I'm going to add stone ground mustard to that, make it a little thicker and a little tastier. But you can omit it. I like a lot of mustard. And mustard is a great product to use any of your salad dressings, except for your dairies. Your dairy salad dressings is too pungent again. So if you want to use yogurt or sour cream or buttermilk, you want a cheese dressing, like a Roquefort dressing or a blue cheese dressing, I would not use a strong vinegar and I would not use a mustard because they're very pungent. Um, so here's the emulsification trick. And this is, I learned this from a really good chef. So we're going to turn the blender on first, kind of mix this up. And, yeah. So that's a good mix. But what you want to do is to emulsify, you add your olive oil and the slower you let it go, the more it emulsifies. So I'm going to hope she does okay here and doesn't blend it. When I'm at home, I can make a mess, right? But. So you can see I did about a 50-50 ratio there. So it's about 50% of the vinegars, the two vinegars, balsamic and plain, and about 50% olive oil. But I did use mustard, so that actually is probably about 15 to 20% of there. So the slower you actually pour it, the thicker and thicker and thicker it's going to get. And the more you add, but the slower you go, the better you are. So this one's going to be medium thickness. Once you chill it, it's going to get thicker and thicker. Why? Because the olive oil congeals when you cool things down. So when you, as you refrigerate it, it's going to get more like this. So I tell people my, my dressings are really concentrated at the shop, like this is four bottles of this, just this, because you can add a little olive oil to it, you can add a little vinegar to it, you can thin it out with a little water if you want to, you can use it as a marinade if you want to, you can use it in a grain salad if you like, that's what I use for my wheat berry salad, this is exactly what I use to put on the dressing, but the thickness of it comes from the emulsification and the chilling. So as soon as you chill, olive oil gets more solid. So that's kind of how that works. Look for the brands that don't have a lot of things on the market that are smaller, and also look for the brands that are in the top shelf or the bottom shelf. The ones that are at eye level and have 50 products, those are the ones you want to avoid because they're usually, they pay for that section because that's the first one you grab. Um, I buy it in such big quantities, I actually buy it in five gallon containers. So, because I use it a lot. So for some, I never buy it at the grocery store. but. The glazes you can buy and they're good, but you have to be very careful because a lot of times they add a lot of sugar to it. So if I want something sweet in my salad dressings, like if I want to do a sesame ginger and I want a sweetness to it, or if I want to do a balsamic and I want it sweeter, or if I want to just do a apple cider vinegar and olive oil, uh, I'll add dates to it. And you can add two or three dates to this and it'll make it super sweet. And it's super good for you. And it'll also thicken it up as well. So just drop two or three dates in there and you're good to go. And blend. Blender's good. And the reason I changed over from a food processor to a blender is because I don't like a lot of work. And I don't like a lot of cleanup. And then one great thing about using a blender, put this in your salad. You could add the herbs if you wanted also as well. This was just traditional. Is when you do this, you can pour into your jars very easily. If you have a food processor, you got to pour it in another container and you got to clean the food processor and you need to clean the container. So this way I can put it right in my jars, stick them right in the freezer, and with the pour thing, it's really easy. So I like less work. I don't know about you guys, but anything that's less work and less cleanup is big for me. 
So you can do it just like that. Put your lid on there. It's done and done. You can make 20 of them and put it in your freezer if you want to. You can make five of them. You can share it with a friend, but it's super, super easy to do. And you can also, like I said, it's really art. You can add some oregano. You can add more scapes. You could add more garlic. You could add more mustard. You could add any, you can add a couple of dates if you want to. You can add more salt and pepper if you want to. It's really your, like, for me, I would add more oregano. I like the taste of oregano. So you can put that on there if you want to, and you can also know that it's gonna stay stabilized in there. Once you blend it, it, it just makes it a whole lot better. And I love so my little- fresh herbs won't turn it rancid or- No, no, won't turn it rancid at all. You can use almost any fresh herb you want to. I also use, sometimes when I wanna make my salad dressings thicker, or I wanna make them just brighter, or I want like my herb vinaigrette, which is my best selling salad dressing, I use dry parsley in it because it really brings out a dark, rich color. And people see color and they like that. So it's a little bit more savory to use the dry herbs. So it's gonna get a little more tart, kind of like the, so if you use fresh, you're gonna get flavor. If you use dry, you're gonna get more savory. So just like you would do for a rub or anything. But I use a lot of dry parsley because it's just easy and I worked at too many restaurants where I chopped parsley for hours and I'm over it. <laughs> so you can use parsley in anything, but the dried works. It also will help thicken. Dried parsley is also a great rub for meats or chickens or, or um, roasted vegetables, grains, rice, pasta, anything. So what I was gonna tell you is the wheatberry salad that we sell, and everybody loves it, it's got the balsamic dressing, it's got the parsley, walnuts, carrots, celery. Grain salads are amazing. And you can put them right over your greens, your fresh greens, and it's perfect meal. So try to think, so when you think of a salad, what do you think of? Lettuce. <laughs> Bacon I love, but most people put lettuce, they put tomato, cucumbers, and all the normal stuff, and I'm like, no, let's not do anything normal. Let's kick it up a notch, shake it up a bit. You know, put some boiled eggs, put some bacon, put some grain, put some rice, put some pasta. Your salads can be anything you want to be on them and make a great meal. So I'll tell you one little trick real quick before we start wrapping up about your salad greens. There's absolutely no reason to buy salad greens at a grocery store. They come from California, if you're getting the organic ones, in a plastic bin, that you have to recycle, it doesn't really get recycled. Um, but there's so much greens here in this county. There's greens, there's 10 farms. I mean, go to her farm. Everybody's got greens, good greens. And if you want them to last, for me, the best way is take them out of the plastic bag and wrap them in either a paper towel or a dish towel and just wrap it like a baby and stick it in your refrigerator and it'll last for weeks. Of course, it shouldn't last for weeks because you should be what? eating it every day. <laughs> Poor Fernando, I'm like, so how, how much salad greens do you have left out of that bag? Um, so this amount of greens for John and I is about two or three days. And that's, it's for two people. I look at that and I'm like, okay, we only got two days of greens. So I need more. But we eat greens with every meal. It goes under, it goes in, it goes on top of whatever. So his eggs, it goes in the eggs. So green should be a part of your diet all the time because it feeds your blood, it helps your organs, it helps cholesterol, it helps blood pressure, it helps anything that you got. Greens will help that. So what I encourage you to do is again, take them out of the plastic bags where they don't do well, wrap it in paper towel or dish towel. We don't have paper towels at our house very much, so I did use dish towels. And then you use them and don't stick them in that drawer what I try to teach people when I do refrigerator cleanouts is all those drawers in the refrigerators, I just take them out. Uh, put this in storage, because when it goes in a drawer, what happens? It goes away, and, it, and then you open it up a month later and it's all rotten in there. Like I would open people's drawers and I'm like, you have 40 pounds of produce in here that's rotten in this bottom drawer. <laughs> so they kind of put it in the drawer and it just goes bad. So. Um, your radishes and your carrots and your uh, celery all goes in water. 
you know that. So bowls of water, those vegetables. And your greens, they don't want to be in water. They want to be in a drier environment. So put them in red towels. Um, questions? Yeah. Ann talked about marinades. Now, I tend to use marinades, especially with, you know, meats and chicken. Mm -hmm. How, what's the best way to, let's say, marinate a piece of meat or, you know, a piece of chicken? For me, I mean, I'll use like the balsamic vinegar or the herb vinaigrette and do some of the fresh herbs and leave it in a pan in my refrigerator overnight. So always overnight, because it needs that amount of time. People think they can marinate an hour. It just not kind of soak it up. You really need an overnight temperature. And then the fresh herbs will help the absorption in there. So the herbs actually concentrate it and help the absorption. So any kind of herbs you can use are always good. And why somebody would pay $4 for a little piece of herb in the grocery store instead of buying the plant confuses me. Like once you buy the plant, you have it all the time. <laughs> so it's much easier just to have a little plant. Um, marinating though, you can marinate vegetables. I mean, we roast a lot of vegetables. And so I'll do like three sheet pans, you know, sheet pans that you bake cookies on. I'll just chop up all the vegetables I have, onions, carrots, celery, whatever, and build three sheet pans, use a little bit of dressing on there marinade as a marinade, any kind of herbs that I have, put them in the oven, roast them, and then put five or six containers. And guess what I have? Roasted vegetables for all week. I can freeze some, but it's all done. And then you can just do it at one time, you have it all done. And you have it all the time to eat. If you have those foods ready, you'll be less likely to eat the things that are frozen, are not so healthy for you, or some of the breads that have, just look at the ingredients. It's not rocket science. You look at it and you go, I mean, there was this pizza crust that I wanted to buy. And I was like, look at the ingredients. I, when I'm on number 12, I'm going, nope, this one's not going with us. So just look at your ingredients and you'll, you can see everything there. Um, questions about making. Emulsification is the key if you want it thick. It can be thin if you want it. Make it simple and easy, or you can make it thick. Um, dairy, easy to make. Blue cheese, easy to make. Green goddess, e I use sour cream or yogurt. Either one you like. I use yogurt because I think whey is really good for you. So whey is a very good, natural, healthy thing for your body. So yogurt for me is what we use in our green goddess. But you can use sour cream as well. And cheeses, any cheese you want to, emulsification is the key. Add the oils. Don't buy the cheap cheese and cheap out. You're basically buying plastic. And never buy shredded cheese. Does anybody know why? So when you, when you grate cheese at home, does it just break up easily like that shredded cheese in the bag? It sticks together in a big clump, doesn't it? Because it doesn't have... Well, there's all kinds of stuff that they use to keep it, keep it nice and fresh and breakable. So it's just a lot of preservatives and a lot of cornstarch and a lot of stabilizers, and you're basically eating a lot of plastic. So no grated cheese and buy better cheeses. You don't have to get the artisan cheeses all the time. Those are just really tasty, but look for the better quality cheeses and not the lower end cheeses because you're just basically getting cheap, tasteless plastic. So it's better to spend a little bit more. It's interesting to me, I've had people who drive up in a $100,000 car, but they're worried about spending $8 on a piece of cheese. I'm thinking, okay, one might help you and might be good for your diet, and one might not be so good for your diet. So it's, it's just an interesting concept that people are afraid to spend money on food and want it really cheap. And what's the basis of our health? What we put into our bodies. The food should never be cheap, food should be good. Uh, we should pay our farmers well. We should be treating our bodies well. We should be buying the best we can eat. I mean, the best thing you can do for your soul and your body and for the planet and for the farmer and for the community is to buy really good quality local food. So when you're doing that, then you're really doing everybody a favor, including yourself. So pay the farmer. It's like you'd want to get paid. Pay them well and they'll grow you a really good product. They can't grow you a good product if you want salad for a dollar. They just can't do it. Otherwise, they had to cheap out too. So pay your farmers well, buy good products, read ingredients, keep it super simple, and any other questions? Because then we get to eat. <laughs>